Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we have discussed, uh, we had discussed uh, how using uh, three main tools of monetary policy, that is the open market operation uh, and open market operation discount window and changing the reserve requirement, uh, how Fed can influence the Fed fund rate. Uh, in that discussion, we also see that uh, to the effects also depends on the position at which uh, the supply curve uh, intersect with the demand curve. The supply of resource and demand for resource intersect the point of intersection. In this session, we will continue little bit on uh, using this tool and subsequently we also see that at, uh, what is the criteria the Fed use in determining the Fed fund rate that also we are going to discuss in this session. So, let us continue this discussion. The remaining part uh, in our discussion uh, as part of the previous session is that what if Fed change the interest rate on reserves. So, because we have seen that when the Fed announce, Fed, uh, Fed normally when they are announcing the FFR, uh, in announcing the FFR, they use the lower limit, they announce a target rate that is the lower limit. For example, 2.25 percentage is the lower limit and the upper limit is 2.5 percentage. Right. So, in this case, uh, we know that the lower limit that is the 2.25 percentage that actually by using the uh, interest rate on reserve, uh, the Fed is able to ensure that uh, Fed fund rate will never go below uh, this lower limit that means 2.25 percentage. So, accordingly the Fed uh, will be determining the interest rate on reserves. So, here initially uh, assume that uh, this is the interest rate on reserves that is the interest rate on reserve the initial one and we can say that this is the initial initial interest rate this is the FFR equilibrium interest rate uh, where uh, demand for reserve is equal to supply of reserve right this is the equilibrium point. Now, we are going to uh, make and um, discuss what if uh, when we discuss the situation uh, when uh, the Fed reserve system is going to increase the interest rate on uh, reserves. Suppose this one initially assume that this one is 2.25 percentage. Suppose then they want to increase the interest rate on reserve, then the impact is going to be like this. We can see that this is the, uh, suppose they increase the IA interest rate from IR to uh, this point that is increase in the uh, interest rate on reserve is going to be IR1. Uh, then you can see that the new interest rate on reserve is going to be this. Let us give a numerical values for this. For example, uh, make it 2.30. So, what are the likely impact? Uh, you can see here is that the still the intersection of the demand curve and supply curve happen here. Right. Still, that, that means uh, if they increase the reserve uh, only, only this much is not going to change the effective the equilibrium uh, Fed fund rate equilibrium Fed fund rate uh, is not going to have change because still the interaction that the demand curve is this yellow one here and supply curve is the NBR component uh, this is the intersection point. What if again they are going to increase the further keep on increasing um, we can see that keep on increasing uh, the Fed for that uh, the interest rate on uh, reserve uh, then we, we can see that uh, suppose if they attain at this point, uh, increase suppose this one is for example uh, 2.4. This is the new uh, uh, interest rate on uh, reserves, let us call it uh, IR, IR2, this one. So, that means 2.40. So, you know that now the supply curve, uh, supply curve is this uh, purple color I uh, intersect at this yellow curve here. Uh, this is the initial inter in interest rate, then now the new Fed fund rate is going to happen at this point. Now, we can see that um, the Fed fund rate uh, also increases. Initially, the Fed fund rate is somewhere for example, uh, 2.35. Now, the new Fed fund rate is equal to the interest rate uh, on 
um, interest rate on reserve is going to be the new Fed fund rate also uh, increases. The new Fed fund rate uh, this is equal to 2.40 as per our example. So, what we have seen here is that the increase uh, the, or the changes in Fed fund rate that actually the effects uh, the effects of changes in uh, interest rate on reserves uh, it depends again on the position of the supply curve and as well as the demand curve the intersection point initial. So, here uh, in this point uh, we saw that here we saw that um, there, is, there, are, there is no impact of increasing F that uh, interest rate on uh, reserve to this point that is to IR1 that is 2.3 from 2.25 if they increase further but once it makes here uh, here is going to make a uh, impact right so is going to be here so they if keep on increasing this is going to be here like that so again if they increase the demand for that interest rate on reserve you can say that uh, fed fund rate is uh, increasing again uh, again you can see that if they keep on increasing um, interest rate on reserve uh, then the the fed fund rate uh, is going to going to increase so that means uh, when they are increasing uh, the interest rate on reserve the horizontal portion uh, of the demand curve shift upwards and obviously you know that if the, they reduce the reserve then the horizontal portion uh, of the de demand curve will be shifting downwards so what we have seen uh, in this session uh, in this discussion and also from previous session um, that means the three tools of uh, monetary policy uh, can be used by the fed to change the fed fund rate Right, we have seen that uh, that open market operation, discount rate, and changes in reserve requirement, as well as changes in the interest rate on reserve. Uh, these tools can be used to change to influence the Fed fund rate. Then the question here is that how the Fed Federal Reserve's operating procedure limit fluctuations in the Federal fund rate? Because here what we have seen that. Uh, supply and demand analysis of the market for reserves illustrate that how an important advantage of Fed's current procedure for operating the discount window and paying on interest reserve is that they limit fluctuations in the demand federal funds rate. So, in the among the all the three tools, the um, we can see that. Uh, what we normally uh, see in the newspaper that means the, the outcome that is 8 years 8 times in a year uh, that is the outcome of the uh, federal open market committees federal FOMCs that is a, that means mainly the open market committee federal open market committee uh, they are the main influencer uh, in the determination of um, the Fed fund rate. However, they also use the other tools that means the discount rate and reserve requirement how much uh, what is the proportion plus the interest rate on uh, reserves. So, open market operations are the dominant policy tool of the Fed since uh, it has complete control over the volume of transactions. Uh, these operations are flexible and precise and easily reversed and can be quickly implemented. So, we have seen that two component of the two component uh, NBR uh, and uh, BR uh, within this between this we have seen that Fed is having more control over the NBR because uh, using NBR suppose if they want to increase the reserve suppose for example 10 million for example 10 million if they want to increase reserve they want to increase reserve by uh, uh, 10 million. Um, so, if the precisely if they want to increase Fed can easily depend upon NBR because they will be placing order to the dealers and accordingly they will be making the purchase of that much uh, government securities from the banking market and accordingly the reserve. For example, they want to increase uh, by 10 million they can easily achieve that. But we have seen that the BR it has certain limitations uh, they can reduce the discount rate, but there is no uh, guarantee that the precise targets or suppose they want to increase reserve by 10 million uh, is not possible to achieve that because even, even if Fed is reducing the discount rate, uh, the borrowing uh, borrowing by the member bank it depends upon their willingness to borrow. 
because their willingness to borrow uh, also depends upon their investment opportunities right the investment opportunities of the uh, member banks because uh, they are they have, suppose they are, they are borrowing it for maybe for selling that is the, the mainly for uh, giving loans if they don't find productive loan opportunities with a low default risk then they won't be borrowing so that means uh, in that perspective we can say that uh, fed is having less control over the br uh, to achieve the target of the changes in reserve and it has more control over the NBR. So, this is the dominant because of this, this is the dominant uh, policy. So, discount rate is less well used since it in, is no longer binding for most banks, can cause liquidity problems and increases uncertainty for banks. So, suppose increasing the, suppose they, they see that the Fed fund rate has to be increased. And what in one two way in order to use the BR tool that is the discount window uh, is by increasing the discount rate, right? Increasing the discount rate. So that means when they increase the discount rate in order to influence the Fed fund rate, that means they are taking back, they, they are pay lending the commercial bank, uh, the bank banking system at a higher rate. So that means that would affect. Um, liquidity if the fed is keep on using a uh, discount window for you for this purpose this will increase the liquid this will cause the liquidity and also increase as uncertainty for banks that means mainly because the, the one of the main sources of funds for the banking system is the fed right so if they increase the discount rate uh, is going to affect their borrowing power so the discount window remains a tremendous value given its ability to allow fed to act as a lender of last resort so the discount window in addition to it acting as a uh, monetary policy tool the discount rate window is mainly to act as a uh, lender of the last resort when the banking system is uh, facing a liquidity constraint then at that time uh, reducing the discount wind rate and the bank is going to lend uh, to the needy bank. So, coming to the ch that is changing the reserve requirement uh, that means increasing the reserve what we have seen that in the curve when they uh, this is the initial demand curve when they increase the reserve uh, we can say that the curve is shifting rightwards the, uh, the curve is shifting rightwards uh, this is what we are seeing that curve is shifting rightwards but the concern here is that when the fed is increasing the reserve that means initially 10 percentage uh, when now bank is uh, fed is going to increase to 15 percentage then you can see that uh, is going to affect the profitability of the banks Right, that means uh, 10 percent day to 15 percent day. Now they have to keep more um, resources with the banking system. Then the money left over with the banking system is less for making uh, loans, uh, loans and making investment in uh, government securities. That fund is uh, will come down. So that that means suppose their objective of the Fed is to influence the Fed fund rate. However, uh, this also has another adverse uh, influ uh, consequence that means the bank's profitability will decline, Pros bank's profitability will decline if they uh, increase the reserve B requirement. That means less fund is left with the uh, banking system that the commercial banks to make the lending and buying government securities. So, these are the relative pros and cons. So, during global financial crisis time, uh, this kind of policy tool, sometimes the conventional monetary tools that the open market operation, discount window and uh, reserve requirement, uh, this will not work because uh, mainly during financial crisis time, you can see that uh, there is an impact on the uh, liquidity aspects. The liquidity uh, of the banking system is we at a very low level, bottom level. So, at that time, uh, using open market operations and discount window and reserve requirements, uh, this will not be making uh, any impact. So, at that time, mainly the discount window, it will be expanded, mainly at that time, the borrowed reserve part, this will be expanded by reducing the discount rate considerably significantly uh, reducing the discount rate and also introducing new lending programs on top of the discount window because in the discount window we have seen that uh, to lend to the banking system they need collateral right this is a secured loan these are actually secured loan uh, but during financial crisis you know that uh, 
during financial crisis you know that uh, the collateral the net worth of the banking system also declined so they don't have much collateral or net worth to flood with the central bank so at that time they have to give some unsecured uh, unsecured loan unsecured loans and it's mainly come as a bay as part of the bailout package and that means a new lending programs will be introduced that will become some non conventional uh, monetary policy during uh, financial crisis time overall we can say that the failure of uh, conventional monetary policy tools in financial panic because when the economy experiences a full scale financial crisis uh, conventional monetary policy tools cannot do the job uh, for mainly for two reasons one is financial system seizes up to such an extent that it becomes unable to allocate um, capital to productive uses and so investment spending and the economy collapses and during financial crisis the negative shock to the economy can lead to uh, zero lower bound problem so at that time zero lower bound problem means the lower limit of the fed fund rate is going to be zero for example uh, zero, 0 is the lower bound and upper bound is for example 0.25 percentage so that means almost the fed uh, is targeting that the fed fund rate should be almost near to zero for our, for example 0.10 0.10 percentage that means literally if zero means um, one bank can borrow from another bank uh, without paying any interest right so that means uh, during the negative shock time uh, there is limited investment and the banking system also the their uh, financial operation their banking operation also decline is seeing a shrink and as a result uh, they also would, they don't want to borrow and uh, banks won't be having other banks also won't be having resort to lend as well and this or at this time um, sometime the fed fund rate this kind of policy tools won't work the ffr uh, won't work at that time um, the fed uh, need to uh, rely on uh, the bailout package and new lending programs what we have done here is that we have completed uh, our discussion uh, on uh, discussion uh, on the fed fund rate determination and how different policy tools um, conventional policy tools can affect fed fund rate determination and subsequently we also discuss uh, during financial crisis time the conventional policy tools uh, won't work often uh, now let's continue our discussion uh, using uh, how the fed fund rate what are the motivating factor uh, driving force in determining the fed fund rate for example Fed is saying that the target Fed fund rate is, for example, 2.5 percentage uh, to uh, 2.5 percentage. That is actually the Fed fund rate uh, that was announced um, uh, in July uh, 2022, right? July 2022. So before that, for example, in um, uh, year 2020, uh, we can say that the FFR was almost near to zero. The lower bound was zero. Uh, upper bound was 0.25 percentage so uh, prior to that in 2018 um, in 2018 uh, the, at that time also fed fund rate was a uh, little bit lesser uh, low, low figure but above the zero so at a different period of time we can see that uh, fed is changing the fed fund rate the target fed fund rate has been keep on changing so it's not actually uh, they are uh, doing it very randomly there are some reasons for that uh, maybe when the economy is in boom uh, the economic activity is at the boom stage that means uh, high high level of economic activity at that time uh, they want to reduce the uh, increase the rate of interest uh, because at that time they also see sometimes inflation is very high they increase the fed fund rate but when the economy is at a recessionary stage uh, then they will reduce they in general this is the general uh, observation general inference that means during recession if they anticipate a recession uh, then they will reduce uh, the fed fund rate so as a result uh, we can see that the interest rate in the economy also overall it will uh, get reduced and as a result um, uh, there will be a rejuvenation of investment uh, that is investment in productive that in, uh, uh, investment by firms to produce more goods and services and as a result the economy will be bouncing back uh, to the main track to its natural track right 
So, in this way uh, let us see how uh, is as a part of economics in action uh, in determining the Fed fund rate there are uh, some suggestive tools as well. One of the tool is Taylor's rule. Uh, John Taylor uh, he proposed a tool uh, based on which uh, accordingly the Fed can is a suggestive tool uh, based on which uh, the Fed can uh, decide at uh, this given this this scenario conditions uh, for example inflation uh, the current level of output and accordingly they can suggest that uh, this is going to be the uh, th this can be the Fed fund rate. So, we are going to discuss uh, this Taylor's rule in detail in this session and in subsequent session. Coming to this, there are two things we need to decide. One is the target. Target means the target Fed fund rate. The target Fed fund rate, um, and another is the Fed fund rate uh, actually they determined by market. So normally, what we have seen in the, if you recall uh, our previous discussions in the initial uh, earlier sessions, we say that interest rate in an economy or uh, in a mar economy is determined by the market, right? We have used the demand for bonds and supply of bonds uh, as the framework to determine uh, interest rate in the market, right? That is the main discussion we had. But when we discuss the Fed fund rate, we are actually moving something else, moving away from market. We are seeing that here the Fed fund market rate uh, is being determined by the government, but that is wrong. Uh, what we can, uh, our point here is that, that concept is there, government intervention is there, central bank that the federal reserve intervention is there, but still the rate is determined by the market. So, let us uh, discuss that before discussing the Taylor rule in detail. A common mistake is to imagine that these changes in the way uh, federal reserve operates alter the way the money market works. So, because we have seen interest rates are in fact uh, determined by the demand and supply of money. That is true as well. Actually, the interest rate is determined by uh, the market forces. But what we have seen here is that central bank, a central bank can influence the interest rate by changing the money supply or the reserve. Changing the money supply or changing the reserve with the banking system through which the central bank can influence the interest rate. So, you will sometimes hear people say that the interest rates no longer reflects the supply and demand for money because the Fed sets the interest rate target. The fact is that in fact the money market works the same way as always, interest rate is determined by the supply and demand for money. The only difference is that now the Fed adjusts the supply of money that the what Fed is doing here is that in order to attain, uh, in order to influence the Fed fund rate, it influences the supply part. Actually, it is determined by the demand and supply, but the supply part they change. They increase the supply of money through reserve or they reduce the supply of money to make an influence or to achieve its target interest rate. So, it is important not to confuse a change in the Fed's operating procedures with a change in the way the economy works. So, here what should be the Fed fund rate, a desired interest rate, uh, Fed fund rate. Uh, here well known economist John Taylor, he proposed a rule. Suppose we have seen that Fed fund rate is for example, uh, 1.5 to 2 or whether it should be 2.2 or 2.5, uh, this one, uh, uh, what is the target rate, what is the, how this target rate is de determined. So, John Taylor, he suggests a tool as an activist rule. That means, the Fed fund rate should be uh, determined that the, the target rule, uh, the rate, uh, it should be based on a formula. The Taylor's rule tells the monetary authority uh, how to set interest rate in response to economic activity. So, this is his formula that is IT. Uh, IT means the short term nominal interest rate that is nothing but the Fed fund rate that is nothing but our FFR, uh, this is FFR. Then R star is the real natural long run rate of interest. So, that is the uh, real, um, this one, uh, uh, real 
a natural long run rate of interest corresponding to natural uh, unemployment. So, the concept of natural unemployment means it is corresponding to the natural GDP, natural output that means given uh, its resources, given the resources that means uh, labor, land labor capital uh, and all the resources technology including all the resources of the economy at a given point of time how much the economy can produce what is the natural GDP. So, that means the natural GDP uh, the corresponding employment level is called uh, natural uh, employment level or suppose in a say we normally say the natural employment means 100 percentage employment, but not really uh, for example, 5 percent of the population for example, 5 percent of the population they cannot um, uh, be due to structural reason and some fri frictional fa factors uh, is not necessary that 100 percent the full full employment means uh, 100 percent of the labor force is working. Uh, we accept that for example, 5 percentage of the population uh, labor force they cannot work due to some uh, structural reason and voluntary unemployment etcetera. So, we say that that one is called uh, natural unemployment natural uh, uh, natural unemployment natural unemployment. Uh, that actually we are willing to accept for example, 5 percentage to 6 percentage that is well developed countries normally they accept that full employment means uh, natural unemployment at a 5 percentage or 6 percentage. So, that means when economy at a normal that means economy at this natural that the natural economic growth natural GDP the corresponding interest rate uh, is called uh, natural long run interest rate that it means economy at the normal time. And this one is um, the rate of inflation uh, which is measured by the GDP deflator and uh, pi star is going to be the target uh, inflation rate. So, this one what we can see that this one is uh, the inflation gap this one is inflation gap and y t y t is the actual real GDP and y t y star t is the potential GDP. Potential GDP means uh, by in a normal time by given all its resources uh, how much GDP it can produce that is the potential GDP. Normally, we see that uh, normally the economy should be at this natural growth uh, that the potential GDP should be producing the potential GDP, but due to some uh, friction in the economy, economy fall below that then the recession happen and if it is above the potential GDP then the economy is at the boom stage right. Otherwise, in the normal time uh, economy will be producing what it can produce given its resources that is the potential GDP. And if the actual GDP uh, the difference between the actual GDP what is actually produced and what is its potential uh, that is called the output gap. Uh, suppose the potential uh, yeah, GDP uh, is greater than the uh, actual GDP then you can say that there is a negative risk uh, because suppose the economy can produce for example, 100 billion that is the potential, uh, but it actual GDP is only for uh, 90 billion. Uh, uh, then you can say that there is a gap of minus 10 that is actually uh, economy set recession. We can say this output gap is negative means uh, economy is currently producing below it can produce. So, this is the GDP output gap. So, what uh, Taylor suggests that when a constant 2 approximates the long run average real uh, interest rate the inflation rate is 2 percentage and with the Taylor's approximation of alpha pi and uh, b beta by is going to be 0 0.5. So, that means uh, it is going to be uh, 2 this is um, the constant 2 uh, used in the formula and Taylor suggests that the alpha coefficient uh, is going to be 0, uh, 0 0.5 and the beta coefficient is also going to be 0 0.5 accordingly. Uh, he suggests this one and he also based on the empirical data they were research he said that uh, this uh, r r means the real natural long run interest rate should be 2 um, and the alpha the weightage for uh, inflation gap is going to be 0 0.5 and weightage for uh, output gap is going to be 0 0.5 and then accordingly um, uh, and keeping this one and then what is the inflation gap in the economy, what is the output gap in the economy accordingly the Fed fund rate should be determined. Suppose, if current inflation is 5 percentage with a 2 percentage inflation target uh, while GDP is 1 percentage above the potential GDP then 
Fed would set the Fed fund rate at uh, IT is equal to 9. So, this is the way. Suppose given that uh, current inflation is 5 percentage with a 2 percentage inflation target and while GDP is 1 percentage above the potential GDP that means uh, potential GDP is uh, the, that the infl output gap is greater than the normal uh, economy is producing uh, 1 percentage above uh, is uh, natural GDP or potential GDP then uh, Fed is setting the Fed fund rate at 9. So, that means plugging this one um, plugging this value in the uh, formula Taylor rule formula we are going to see that uh, the Fed, rate, Fed fund rate uh, should be 9. So, based on this uh, rule this activist rule uh, given these factors these are the output gap um, the inflation gap and this is the uh, output gap um, accordingly uh, they will be uh, fixing the Fed fund rate should be uh, 9 percentage. So, in the next session we will continue uh, this discussion. Uh, thank you, thank you for watching uh, this video.